So chapter four is going to look at measures of what we call variability. So the first concept we're going to talk about is the range. So remember when we talked about measures of central tendency <clears throat> last chapter, chapter three. So that's talking about what's average or typical of a distribution. Variability is going to talk about how those scores are centered, um, sorry, how those scores are scattered around that center of that distribution. <coughs> so the range is the difference between the highest and lowest score. This is very easy to calculate. Just take the highest score, subtract the lowest score. It's a very crude measure. Say the test scores, you know, ranged from um, 90 to 40. The range is 50, okay? One case can strongly impact that, so it doesn't really give us a good, precise indication of variability. Two better numbers are variance and standard deviation. And you're going to find that these are going to be numbers <coughs> <coughs> that become part of the formulas we're going to deal with in the upcoming chapters. Okay, so the deviation is the distance of any score from the mean. So remember the mean is our average, okay? If our average is 10, the score of 15, that deviation is five, okay? When you sum up all the deviations, they should come to zero, okay? Because you'll have some to the left and some to the right, okay? So what we do is then we square those deviations to eliminate the minus signs. Variance is taking the squared deviations, okay, summing them up, dividing them by n. That gives us the average of the squared deviations. Okay, so S2 stands for variance. Remember that weird looking E stands for sum of the score minus, right, so X is the score. X bar, remember, is our average. Square that, divided by n, the total number of scores. With variance, the unit of measure is squared, but it can be really difficult to think about squared units and to interpret what that means. So what we do is we take the square root of that and that gives us what we call the standard deviation, okay? So S squared is variance, S is standard deviation, you just take the square root of the actual variance. So let's look at what, how we find the standard deviation. So imagine we've got um, some data here about how long someone's been on probation. First, we need to find the mean of our distribution. We need to find X bar, right? So we're gonna add up all those scores, which equals 30, divided by six, because six is the number of scores in the distribution. So our, our mean, X bar, equals five. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take each raw score and subtract the, de the deviation, subtract it from the mean to get the deviation, okay? So we're going to take x minus the mean, so 9 minus 5, 8 minus 5, 6 minus 5, 4 minus 5, 2 minus 5, and 1 minus 5. Okay, so we've got those numbers. We've got x minus x bar. Now we need to square those. Okay, so 16, 9, 1, 1, 9, and 16. Then we're going to add those together. That gets us the sum of the squared deviations. Then we're going to divide it by the number, by n, the number in our sample, which was 6. That gets us the variance. And then we're going to take the square root, and that gives us the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is 2.94 months for the six offenders. That means on average, okay, the scores in the distribution deviate from the mean by about three months. Okay, so the two in the distribution is below the mean, but by an average amount. Let that just kind of sink in for a little bit. So to summarize those steps, we're going to find the mean, subtract the mean from each raw score, square the deviations, add them together, divide by n, and then take the square root of the result. Okay, there's an easier way to do this called the raw score method. <clears throat> so remember again, S squared is variance and S is standard deviation. So for S squared, what we could do is we could take the sum of X squared, of all the X squared, divided by N minus the square of the mean. And then standard deviation is just the square root of that. So let's look at that method, okay? So we've got the same numbers, 9, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 1. 
So we're going to square each raw score, 81, 64, 36, 16, 4, and 1. Sum them together for 202. Okay? <clears throat> we're also going to find the mean. We already knew the mean, right? The mean is 5, and then we're going to square it, which is 25. Okay? Then we're going to plug it into the formula. So we're going to take the sum of x squared, which was 202, divided by 6, minus 25, and then take the square root. Notice it gets us the same number as it should. So again, for the um, raw score method, we're going to square each raw score, add them together. Take the mean, square it. And then we're going to take those steps and plug it into the formulas. So hopefully you're not too overwhelmed yet. What do we do when we have a simple frequency distribution? How do we get the variance and the standard deviation here? Okay, so again, we still have to get the mean. Okay, so here's our um, simple frequency variation. We have two scores of 18, four scores of 19, three scores of 20. Take a minute to look at it and make sure you understand where that comes from. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come, we're going to times F by X. Okay, so 36, 76, 60. Okay, we sum those together, that gives us 575. Okay, we're also then going to square f of x, f times x. That gives us 13,589. We're going to calculate our mean, which is 23. That's the same way we've been calculating an average all along, and we're going to square it, which is 529. Okay, then we're going to plug this in the same way we did before. So the sum of f of x squared divided by n minus x bar squared. Okay, that gets us the variance. Then we want to take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. And here's the summary of those steps again. You might want to print these slides out, especially the examples for when you have to do your problem sets. So here's an example, right? <clears throat> the first two columns are our, are our uh, frequency distribution, right? And then remember, we're going to times F and X, and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to just plug it into this formula. Okay. Another uh, measure of variability we might think about is called the coefficient of variation. Sometimes researchers want to compare variability for two or more characteristics that have been measured in different units, okay? So imagine I want to compare hours worked per week as well as hourly wages amongst corrections officers in a state penitentiary, okay? Which has more variability? Which spreads out more? Wages per hour or hours per week? You might think you want to calculate the standard deviation, but this is meaningless because we're talking about hours per week and wages per hour, right? And these are not the same measurements. So we can use a coefficient of variation, and this is based on the size of the standard deviation, but its value is independent of the unit of measurement. So it expresses standard deviation as a percentage of the mean. So you, it's literally, CV stands for coefficient of variation. It's 100 times the standard deviation divided by X bar. That's a pretty simple one, right? Let's now kind of backtrack a little bit to standard deviation and think about what it actually means. Okay, it's giving us the variance in units we can understand, but how do we interpret that? We get that number, 2.43, right? What the hell does it mean? It represents the average variability in a distribution, okay? It's the average of deviations from the mean. The more variability there is, right, the more spread out the scores are, the larger the standard deviation is. So standard deviation allows us to do a few things. Measure the degree of variability in a distribution or compare the variability in different distributions. Okay? Deviations that are above the mean are plus, below the mean are minus. Now in a normal distribution, right, where the um, where you it, bell, it makes a bell curve, two-thirds of scores are going to be one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. All right, well, if we look at these measures of variability to compare them, range is a very rough number, right? It doesn't really tell us much. So again, remember, if our scores range from 
40 to 90, the range is 50. But what does that mean? Okay. The size of a standard deviation is about one sixth of the range. Okay. Smaller number of cases should revolt in fewer standard deviations to cover the range. Variance and standard deviation take into account every score in the distribution. And we'll spend some more time talking about this when we get into this material in the lab.